It's time now for today's press review. And as we've been saying, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz will meet with Emmanuel Macron today after months of tensions. Our press reviewer, Deepti Laurent, is here to tell us how the world's papers have been reacting to that. Well, there are a lot of pleas in the French press today, uh, Alison, really urging Olaf Scholz and Emmanuel Macron to essentially kiss and make up. Um, France and Germany's relationship has un indeed been under uh, great tension in the, in the past months. And uh, as Liberation says here today, uh, in a very inspired headline, Olaf, uh, the key to this meeting will be uh, trying to patch up uh, those differences and quickly because, uh, of, of course, there are a lot of pressing political issues at stake right now. Uh, in its edition today, Liberation says uh, in its uh, editorial that, uh, you know, the, the, the problem is how each party see, sees each other. For Germany, Emmanuel Macron uh, is happy to advocate European solidarity, but only when it suits French interests. But from uh, a French point of view, uh, Olaf Schulz is seen as a lone rider who's sort of playing the individual game. And in its editorial here today, uh, Liberation uh, wonders what sort of atmosphere will be accompanying this meeting uh, in on Wednesday between the two leaders in Paris, uh, while La Croix, that's a French paper, uh, a pretty simple headline here says, uh, the key here is restoring trust between the two leaders. Now, those are the French papers, Deep D. What are the papers saying over in Germany? Well, the Frankfurter Allgemeine today has a quite an interesting article that looks at uh, one thorny issue in, in particular between the two parties, which is the question of defense. The paper noting that France is quite suspicious of Germany's uh, rearmament uh, plan, which is being funded or financed by a debt fund, giving Emmanuel Macron uh, the impression that Germany is not interested in Europeanizing uh, the arms industry or really even thinking about a common European defense strategy. Now, given that the two countries combined make up about 40 percent of, uh, European, of the European defense industry, the paper notes that things could change, but only if there is a common political will. And that idea of uh, being, uh, of having these common interests is also something that uh, Der Tagesspiegel, another German paper, looks at today. In, it, in this article here, it says uh, it reminds us of really what's at stake in this meeting and the importance of restoring that French-German alliance, that partnership. Uh, it was, after all, the paper says, what made European post-war unification uh, possible. It's also a guarantor of, quote, freedom, peace, prosperity, humanity and happiness in Europe. So a lot at stake today, Alison. Yeah, going to be interesting to see how it goes. Deep D, moving on to Italy, the Prime Minister Georgia Maloney addressed Parliament for the first time yesterday, and that is unsurprisingly dominating the Italian press. Yeah, in, in that inaugural speech as Italy's first female Prime Minister, the far-right leader Georgia Maloney um, sought to mainly reassure the international uh, parties, uh, partners, uh, rather, uh, in her speech yesterday that uh, despite the party's neo-fascist roots, they are committed to uh, European solidarity, they're committed to uh, alliances uh, like NATO and to the EU in general. Now, for La Stampa, that's a centrist paper from Turin. Uh, this, her speech was very much one of political continuity, even if her uh, government has divided the country. That's what uh, uh, La Stampa says, uh, this one here, rather, um, here. As you see here, this is the centrist paper from Turin. Now, let me show you uh, Il Manifesto. That's the Italian uh, communist paper, very scathing in its coverage today. The paper says that um, Maloney uh, uh, proudly evoked her political history, her political biography, but her speech was enhanced by the embarrassment of those who make up her government, uh, men little or much older than her in the role of supporting actors. Uh, Meloni's speech, the paper says scathingly, was right-wing, not just in taboos, but also in slogans. And you see the headline here, uh, poor country, it says. So a very scathing headline from the Communist Party, but uh, from the Communist paper, but not a surprise given its political alignment. Finally, you have La Verita, which is a uh, conservative Italian paper, uh, which hails Meloni's, quote, clear, concrete and identity-affirming speech, one that also dis distanced itself from the party's neo-fascist roots, the paper says. Hmm. All right, finally from you at Deep D, a French photographer has won a very prestigious photography prize and for some very ordinary photos. I'm intrigued. That's right. They are ordinary, but not so ordinary that you and I could do them. Let's be clear about that, Alison. <laughs> the Guardian reports that the Taylor Wessing pho pho photographic 
Portrait Prize has announced its winner. Uh, the competition is quite prestigious. It celebrates the best in contemporary portrait photography. And it's Clementine Schneiderman, a French photographer who spends her time between France and Wales, who won the award for her series called Laundry Day. These photos were actually taken during the pandemic lockdown. These are pictures she took of her neighbors, um, and it really depicts the mund mund mundaneness of life during those extraordinary months in lockdown. Schneiderman uh, took these uh, while under lockdown in Wales, and the simplicity of her photos uh, really won the judges over. They said her series really encapsulated a strong sense of stillness and quiet, but also loneliness and isolation, despite the proximity she had to her neighbors. I dare say we'll be getting a lot of artistic interpretations of that extraordinary time uh, in the years to come, Alison. I agree, they are very poetic as well. Uh, Deepti, thank you so much for that look through the papers. France 24's Deepti Laurent with today's press review.